All right, today is about as pretty as a day could possibly be, but it's a little bit chilly. We had a late season cold front come through two days ago, really blew hard out of the north. Got a kind of residual westerly wind today, not too strong at all, but I decided to take advantage of these good conditions to come into the marsh and see what I can catch. Why don't you come along with me? All right, I'm starting in a bayou that I use often as a thoroughfare, and I've really wanted to fish it this time of year because it's got a lot of depth. As you can tell, it's 13 feet right here, even deeper in some of these bends. So I'm hoping we can find some speckled trout hanging out in some of this deep water. Water clarity is really, really good, very good. This is kind of one of those things you've got to cover a lot of water to find fish doing this. Typically, they're located in the bends, but not always. I do focus my attention on the bends, but sometimes you find them in the straightaways. I came running through here. There's a nice bend right there with some 17 foot water. So I'm kind of make my way up there and make a few casts there, see if we can get bit. Yeah, it's 17 feet right here. Wow. <laughs> this is a deep bayou. The next two months is when I catch a lot of these fish in this deep water. They come in here to feast on juvenile croakers. And I've got kind of a milk run of places that I generally hit to do this, but I'm always looking for new ones. And this is a bayou I've never attempted it in. So we'll see if we have any success. Boy, look at that. It's 20 feet here. Oh, and I'm throwing a green hornet matrix shad on a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. Normally, I like throwing that limbo slice for this, but this green hornet's been so good for me this year. Just got to start with it. Got a lot of confidence in it right now. 21 feet, an absolute canyon. Showing some activity on the bottom too. Sure does look like fish. The bad thing about this technique is most of these bends don't hold fish. So you got to hit a bunch of them. The good news is that if you do hit a bunch of them, eventually you'll find at least a couple that hold some fish but you know for me the hunt is a fun part anyway that's what i enjoy water temp is 61. it declined a good bit with that cold front we don't get too many fronts that cold in late march it was mid 30s at my house a couple nights ago as you can tell the tide is very low lots of exposed bank when i launched it was still falling but now that i'm in here it looks like it's making the turn about to start rising which is good i'm glad well look at that i thought i had a bite and i sure did i got a scale that's a trout scale too all right i punted on that deep water bite simply because the tide's just not inspired yet it should be later today we got a good range today we just set the flip-flop it's changing so I came into a much smaller bayou with a whole lot of exposed bank, as you can see. Looks like the water here is barely trickling in. Not moving too well yet, but I think it will, despite this west wind. West wind's not very strong. It's maybe five knots or so. Winds are supposed to be variable today. So I'm just going to cover some water in smallish bayous for now and see what I can run across. Hopefully I'll catch some fish in some of these bends. Oh, there's a fish. What is that? I don't know, man. He's acting weird. Oh, flounder. There we go. That's why he's acting weird as a flounder. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Bad news for you, dude. Big enough to keep. Flounder often crowd these drop-offs this time of year. You can see this one's nine feet. And no matter what I'm targeting, I'm always glad to catch a flounder. Love them. Oh, there's a fish. Speckled trout, I'm betting. Oh, yep, it was a trout, but we missed him. He earned his freedom coming up and shaking that face. <laughs> Ooh, another bite. Might be a few fish in here. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Real similar to my last trip, these fish are not committing. They're just mouthing the bait. 
probably because this tide's not doing anything. Might be slightly trickling in, but man, it's not, not doing much at all. You gotta kind of squint your eyes to see it moving. As I always say, it's the toughest situation in marsh fishing is a dead tide. I kind of had to deal with it my last two trips into the marsh. By the end of the day on my last trip, it was rolling, but for several hours it was doing nothing. Let's hope we don't have to wait that long today. Man, a trout chased me all the way up, all the way up. Saw him right next to the boat. Hopefully it came out on camera, but I doubt it did. It was about a 12 inch trout. He wasn't all that big. I don't think he was even a keeper. All right, so let's see if we can find something else that'll inspire him to bite rather than just chasing the bait. First up, Versamax bolt. 16th ounce death grip with a holy jolly matrix shad. Let's see if they want that. Oh, there we go. First cast with the bolt. It's a trout. Not sure he's a keeper, but he might be. Uh, I think he's an old school keeper. Not a 2024 keeper, but we're gonna check him just to make sure. He took it deep, that's a good sign. Man, he's closer than I thought. He's 12 and three quarters. All right, he'll be legal in like five minutes, but not today. Oh man, there's some fish there. I just don't think they're giants. They're two good takedowns, <laughs> three good takedowns. <laughs> Four good takedowns. Come on, somebody, somebody commit five. Oh goodness, there's a lot of fish there. Now you can see how low this water is, and as low as it is, it's actually still falling because I can see water coming out of here. I thought it was rising, heading this way, but that's actually a fall here. Just trickling out, it's at the end of the fall, but we are gonna have to endure a change at some point for sure. See if we can hit this school from the other side. Sometimes that makes a difference, the way that bait moves. Needlefish. Oh, there we go, first cast. Feels like about the same, maybe even smaller. That's why we were missing so many. All right, that explains it. That's about a 11 inch or he's really small. All right, let's keep pushing our bayou. Get out of these guppies. Hoping to find a good sharp bend that might have some specks or red stacked up. Hopefully as we keep moving this tide, we'll get a little more conviction. Oh. Well, there's a red. There we go. That's a good red. <laughs> he stopped me on a dime. Real close to the boat. Yeah, that's a big fish. He's about to run the other way. Go ahead, I'll walk with you. Go ahead. Just out for a little stroll. Walking my pet redfish. Pull that drag, wear yourself out. On well, my last trip, I had a fish like this, fought him for several minutes, and then he pulled the hook. Let's hope this one doesn't do that. It's unusual at reds. Normally, once you hook them, you land them. Just based on the fight, I'm guessing maybe 29, 30 inch red. He's, I'm betting he's pretty big. I really can't do much with him. I got a 16 pound fluoro leader, so I can't really just horse him into the boat. 
He's big, I know that. He's a releaser, he's not a take homer. Not for me. Still wanna catch him though. Yeah, yeah, laid eyes on him. 30 inches or so. This is a fish that will almost certainly move outside late this summer to go spawn. And once he moves out, he won't come back in. And now he just wants to get under the Avid. Never ceases to amaze me the power and stamina these fish have. Whoo, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that's why people travel from all over the country here to South Louisiana to catch these. Yep, I see you, dude. And you saw me, didn't you? One last little gasp. Come on, I think you're about done. I don't know how well you can tell, but look at this drop off here. Just a beautiful bayou. All right, big guy. Nope, 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 nope. Keep that head up. Keep that head up. Here we go. All right, you can swim into the net if you want. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's a brute. That's a big redfish. Look at him. Definitely a 30 incher. All right, look at this big brute. Just a monster redfish. I got a tag in him. Now I'm going to let him go. We have to revive him a little bit. He definitely wore himself out. With the water 60 degrees, he should be absolutely fine. He's going to come back to life here any second. Got some water passing over his gills, getting his wits about him. There he goes. All right, so that redfish gives us a slam. Got a flounder, speckled trout, and a red. It's a marsh slam. One of them with absolutely no tide. I'll take it. All right, just release that redfish. Check this out. Look at this water coming out of this trinos. That tells you how low this water is. This is right where I caught this fish, right between these two trinoses. There's one right here. And this one right here. So let's make a couple more casts here so we can find. All right, after a fish like that, I always check my line. It actually feels good. Redfish kind of have sandpaper lips. They can do some damage to some line for sure. It's clouded up and the wind has picked up. Still out of the west. Look at this, seven feet this close to the bank. What a great little spot. Eight feet, nine feet. Whoo, my head. Not surprising we caught that fish there. Oh goodness, that was a great hit. That feels like a better trout. I don't know if he's a keeper or not. I don't know, we'll see. This is the best hit I've gotten yet though, I'll tell you that. Even harder than that redfish. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. All right. The way you hit it, buddy, I bet you got some friends down there. He took it nice and deep too. I'm gonna verify, but I think he's 14. He is in fact 14. Definitely some fish in this little bayou for sure. They're not monsters, obviously, but so much fun. That fish hit like the type of spec hit you love to get. Dunk. He hit with conviction. With this tide being weak, the fish are just really spread out. They're not really focusing on any one particular area where the tide might be eddying or whatever, or maybe coming out of the marsh or something. They're just kind of random. So I'm just making a drift in this bayou, make multiple casts to where I'm getting bites, but not necessarily catching more fish. It's kind of one of those days you just got to keep moving. Hopefully I'll find a focal point that's got some fish on it. But until then, I'll just stay mobile. I like that anyway. Oh, there we go. Another trout. Yep, another trout. I don't know if you're going to be in the box. I don't know. You would have been. I'm positive. You would have been six months ago. Well, one your size would have been six months ago. I don't know if you're 13. I think you're not. I know you're 12. This fish could not be closer to 13 inches. <laughs> He's long and skinny. But not long enough. Look at all these fish on this drop off. 
Look at that. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's foul hooked. <laughs> That's why he's fighting so weird. Oh, dude. Sorry. Right in the air bladder. You're not going to live. Sorry about that. Hopefully you heal. Oh, there we go. These fish are acting crazy once they get hooked. I mean, crazy. Oh, dude, I think you're another between 12 and 13. Pretty sure, croaking male. Yep, he's 12 and a half. Well, not adding any meat to the box, but it's giving me some fish to tag. So hopefully I'll get to see where these fish move from this area. And these fish will definitely be spawning this year. They're gonna move outside for sure. All right, before we move through here, Make sure there's no fish that want to hit the cork. It's kind of how it's been. I catch a fish, I kind of post up. Might catch one or two more, but then that's it. As I said, they're really scattered. Oh, good takedown, <laughs> but probably not a good fish. All right, one hit wonder. One hit wonder. There's a fish. Maybe a red. Nope, a flounder. <laughs> Second flounder of the day. Sadly for us, not sadly for him, he's not big enough. I love flounder, but I'm not keeping that one. Great to see those guys making a comeback. Of course, the state imposed a closed season on flounder in the fall. Can't catch any of them, well, can't keep any of them. But really, the population started coming back before the closure. Of course, the closure helps, obviously. But glad to see those guys. Love catching flounder, love it. Now, I'd like to catch one about four times that size. That would be nice. Oh, missed him. That might have been another flounder. Oh, good hit, good hit. I'm in love with this little bayou. We would be whacking the fish if this tide were screaming. These fish would all be concentrated in these bends for sure. But you got to make the most of the conditions you got. Can't complain about them. Doesn't do any good. And in all honesty, I love covering water, fishing aggressively, getting a bite here and a bite there. Definitely keeps you on your toes forces you to pay attention to your lure, to the conditions, make accurate casts, and each bite, you definitely appreciate it more than when you're sitting on every bite, than when you're sitting on every cast action. But believe me, <laughs> I'd love to find some every cast action. <laughs> of course, it's kind of the goal. Oh goodness, that was a good hit. All right, are you another good fish? Yeah, I don't know. By good, I mean over 13 inches? Yeah, I don't know. He sure hit like it, but whew, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he is. See you next time, sucker. Such a good looking bend right here. You know this thing's got some fish in it. In addition to that one, I mean. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hopefully in addition to this one. File hooked. Man, they're getting smaller. This guy, what were you thinking? He won't have to eat again until summer. Oh, there we go. 
that's a better try. Oh, it's a flounder. It's another flounder. <laughs> All right. Third flounder today. This one's going in the box. As I said, flounder like these ledge walls this time of year. Ooh, man, he was hooked well. That's always the thing with flounder. You never know. A lot of them get off. High percentage of them get off. But this guy took it right through the eye. But he won't be needing any longer. Hitting the trifecta on flounder is definitely unusual. But not unheard of. One day in the spring, fishing this same pattern. We caught 17. Now the tide was screaming that day. They were all on one ledge. There's three of us fishing, but we caught 17 flounder. Crazy. Look at this drop off. Seven feet. That close to the bank. Eight feet. That's why these fish are here. Nine feet. <laughs> wow. What would they be doing if this tide was moving? I'll be back. I know that. Maybe today, <laughs> maybe a different day. All right, not only is the direction of this wind variable, so is the strength. And it just fell down to nothing. As you can see, dead slick. As you can also possibly see in the camera, it's gotten natty. Oh, goodness. <sighs> so you know what that means. If you're a regular viewer, you definitely know what that means. Marsh romance time. Absolutely nothing better made for gnats, marsh gnats, than marsh romance. Nothing. Nothing comes close. It always takes me a while to put it on because I hate to stop fishing, but I'm always so glad I did. World of difference. Gnats are still flying around. I can still see them, but they don't land on you. There we go. Look at this guy. Goodness. <laughs> You're about as big as the gnats, dude. Man, I hooked you right in the gill. Sorry about that. Hopefully you heal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. My camera batteries are about to die. I'm gonna go ahead and eat. Be back in a minute. Hopefully by the time I'm done, this tide is moving a little bit stronger. All right, back in a flash. All right, admittedly not as good of a lunch as what I've been having on fishing trips. Because lately I've been cooking in the marsh. Didn't do that today, but definitely feeling full and ready to catch some more fish. Doesn't appear the tide has started rolling. No, although I can't really tell in this little straightaway. fish don't know what little trout good lord <laughs> some micros in here although he's bigger than the last it's amazing how hard those little fish hit it really is you can't tell by the hit how big the trout is that's for sure there's those fish you can see them on the screen this is a definite pattern you want to check out this time of year. Fishing these kind of moderate bayous, medium-sized bayous. Now, as I mentioned, if this tide were really moving, these fish would be more predictable. They'd be somewhere on the bends. Now, you might have to explore each bend to see exactly where they are. Oh, there he goes. He wasn't a keeper but they would be more concentrated in those bends. <clears throat> also, you'd definitely be more inclined to catch bigger fish. Not that you wouldn't catch any small ones, you certainly would. But these big ones, the bigger fish are not gonna feed as readily with this dead tide. But when the tide is dead like it is now, you just gotta cover the water in the bayou because the fish are gonna be more scattered. Oh, goodness, popped it. It's a super fun way to fish. Now, as I mentioned, when the tides are really screaming, not that I wouldn't do this, but I would definitely check out those bigger bayous and definitely focus on those bends. Kind of how we started the day, didn't have any luck because the tide wasn't moving. 
But as I mentioned, just hit a bunch of those bends and you're gonna find some fish sooner or later. And what's today? March, today's March 20th. It's actually the day of the vernal equinox. So first day of spring today. And this pattern will be good really throughout most of the spring. I mean, spring technically ends in the end of June. It won't last quite that long, but definitely April and May. I don't know if the solstice this year is on June 20th or June 21st, but either way, toward the end of June. I don't know if the solstice this year is on June 20th or June 21st, but either way, toward the end of June. There's a fish, not sure what. Might be another flounder. It felt really weird, like it was clinging to the bottom. It sure is, it's another flounder. Look at this. Four flounder in one day. Yep, I'd say they're making a comeback. All right. Right on this ledge, 10 feet of water right here. You know, it's not 10 feet right there. By you, all of a sudden gotten really shallow, two and a half feet. I'm throw this cork. See if we can get one to bite that. There he is. Oh, well, <laughs> we got something to bite it. It's definitely not a trout. Mr. Redfish. You as big as the dude I caught a little while ago? I don't know. No, you're not as big, but you're big. Still a big old boy. All right, I'll come back with you. Whoa, go under that motor. There we go, good boy. There he goes. Dude, maybe you're bigger than I think you are. Quite a variety today in this little bayou. Reds, flounder, speckled trout. This red looks super copper colored. We'll see when we get him in. The last one wasn't, but this one, man, looks really pretty. Yeah, that's a beautiful red. That's an absolutely beautiful red. Come on, dude. You gotta be exhausted. Oh, you got out the net. Dead gummit. So often happens that this is when you lose these fish. You got him in the net, he gets out, and then you lose him. All right, we didn't lose him. We did not lose this big boy. Yeah, he's about 28, I'm gonna say. Not as big as the last, but big. Big old redfish. All right, we just gotta revive him. There he goes, all right. Well, not what I was expecting to catch on my cork, but not disappointing in the least. And I promise you that red is in here eating those undersized trout. No doubt, they love them. All right, this is the pond at the end of this bayou. And you can see how crazy empty it is. It is just drained of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a video. Spent most of the day just in this one bayou. Really good find. I'll be back when the tide's rolling a little better. There's definitely some fish in here, for sure. Love finding stuff like this, particularly this time of year, because it's gonna be good for the next couple months, for sure. I'll be back, but that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos that YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out if you get a chance. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.